Wreck-It of Ragnarok chapter 82. Chapter starts off with us getting the aftermath of, of course, Apollo getting hit with that huge shot from Leonidas last chapter. With his girls in the crowd crying, he is face down in the rubble, all this ground is broken it's a crazy sight and the girls are saying no way lord apollo can't be in such a state heimdall exclaims leonidas counter violently exploded and leonidas looks like a beast puffing on his smoke as if he's truly smoking that apollo pack the indomitable spartan king finally managed to knock the god of the sun to the ground and he's standing over apollo as his huge ass heavy weapon is in the ground apollo's in the dirt right in front of him and leonidas is truly basking in his own glory at this point Truthfully, we all know what he should be doing. He should be rushing over there to try to finish the job, but he didn't for whatever reason, obviously plot reasons, and maybe just because he's being arrogant in his own right here. So he's puffing out his cigar. The crowd, the human side of the crowd seems to be saying, amazing, with just one blow, he managed to turn the tables. That's the strongest king of Sparta. His Spartans in the crowd are very proud. They're yelling, Sparta, Sparta. Brunhilde freaking out. She's like, hell yeah. Then we actually get to see Jack the Ripper and Locke. Locke is extremely excited for her sister, obviously. She said, says, even after he received all those blows, he refused to fall. And Jack says, tremendous spiritual power and a strong body. The Spartans are truly some of the most fearsome fellows. And he sips his tea. Now, we actually get some really cool shots of Jack here. Um, but then Locke gets mad at him. And she's like, Spartans aren't the only one. Don't forget about my sister. Who do you think is fighting alongside him? When Girdrafold becomes angry, she is truly terrifying. I've already seen the sight of that before. And it's just like a little gag scene that you see. Jack just agrees with her. He's like, hey, that's pretty hopeful. And then we see that Locke is like kind of on edge. She's very happy, but she's also kind of praying in a sense for Gerdrifold to make it out of this as the victor. We then see Gerdrifold say, oh boy, check that out. Her and Leonidas have the best dynamic. I said this in my last review. They have such cohesive personalities. It is not even funny. She's like, oh boy, check that out. What do you think, narcissistic God? And Leonidas is just smirking, smoking on his cigar. She's like his lackey on the right side, bro. Heimdall says, is the match over already? And we start to see the energy kind of shifts. Leonidas his face kind of goes from smug and content to like kind of anger and Heimdall says no the sun didn't burn out yet fucking amazing line and Apollo starts standing back up he's dripping blood from his face we finally get the reveal and he's got this huge gash coming down from his forehead all the way down through his cheek it is crazy that's how much damage he took this is huge because this is about how Everybody was thinking and everybody was perceiving Apollo to be so self-righteous, so arrogant about his own appearance. And we're going to get the truth behind it here. Heimdall says, what a sight. The god who's perhaps the most beautiful is now showing off an appearance so broken that I can barely look at it. His girls can't even fathom what's happening. They said they can't watch. And Leonidas, with some more cold-ass dialogue, says, don't stand in front of Sparta, got it? Go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. It would be unfortunate to expose yourself in such a humiliating state, wouldn't it? So this reinforces the way that Leonidas views Apollo. And what's very interesting about all this is that he had Apollo completely wrong. He thinks that Apollo is going to be reacting in a way where he's in absolute despair over his face. Like the common trope for a self-righteous character and a very arrogant character, their precious face has been hurt. Now he's going to crumble. Now he's going to have a tantrum. And that's like kind of what they started setting the standard for and Leonidas is the perfect type to fight against that kind of character but the status quo here is completely shattered as Apollo first dialogue of the chapter says humiliating on the contrary Leonidas has come again Apollo says you understand what I'm talking about don't you the current me whose soul is burning just to defeat you and trying to fight is more beautiful than anything else he is not wavered an inch he is more reaffirmed now than ever before. Leonidas looks stunned. The crowd saying, beautiful, huh? He's trying to act tough. That's not the kind of thing you should say after being ripped apart like that. They went head on against each other and he ended up like that. He either don't know his own place or he doesn't even know what he's saying. And we see Ares in the crowd actually defend his brother this time. He's like, the spectators are so selfish. It's a running gag of Ares actually loving his brother, wanting his brother to win. Hermes calls him out on it, of course. We get a pretty cool shot of Ares, actually. He's like, that guy definitely knows his place. He isn't the kind of guy who shit talks just to shit talk. Meaning, he stands behind whatever the fuck he says. He is not no poser. He is not no bitch. He is him. Hermes says, you're right. There's no one else who knows his own place better than Apollo. He knows it better than any other god. Meaning, they have utmost belief in him because he has proven himself to the gods. Now we're cutting into his backstory as I mentioned we were going to be getting in my preview. We see the Greek letters spell out know thyself. 
These are the words inscribed in the temple in Delphi dedicated to Apollo. It is said that ancient Greeks interpreted it as follows. You lowly humans should know your place. Like basically humble yourselves in the presence of God, lower yourselves down, you're not on the God's level. That's how they interpreted it. And that's how Leonidas would have interpreted these words as well. But that was not the true message. The true message was something out of philosophy because we find out he is actually the God of philosophy as well, Apollo is. Know yourself, get your true potential out of yourself. So Socrates once said, it is a shame for a man to grow old without seeing the beauty and strength of which his body is capable. Now I forget the word for what it means when your mind, your body, and your spirit all reaches its full potential, but you guys know what I mean if you are familiar with this stuff. That's kind of what Apollo's representing here as the god of philosophy, as the god of, he almost represents enlightenment more than Buddha, which seems blasphemous, but they're similar, you know, where he's like, no, everybody should reach their potential. Everybody should know themselves fully absolutely we're finding out more and more and you peel back the layers you just see that leonidas was clearly the one in the wrong here he had the wrong view of apollo so we see that apollo is the god of philosophy god of poetry god of medicine god of archery god of music god of prophecies and the god of the sun and the people thought that it was like a warning from him that said know yourself below the omnipotent god apollo but that was not his divine will that was truly the opposite, as I just explained. So then we cut into the truth about some of his backstory, and we see that this ancient monster was ravaging the city of Delphi. His name was Python. Basically, he had been banished from the land of the gods because of his appearance, and he took out his rage on the people. He attacked constantly for no other reason than just for vengeance. And it got so bad to the point where Ares actually sent his royal guard down from the heavens to go fight him. And Python was still able to defeat these royal guards. They're probably very similar to the ones that went to take on Hercules village earlier in the story. So Python was destroying all these people. And then one day Apollo himself came down. Now we find out that Ares didn't ask Apollo to go. Apollo just went and he had a cold ass line when he did it because Ares was surprised like, what? why the hell would he go? And Apollo said, the sun rises without being asked. And a friend's expectations are always met, even when they're not asked for. So he's just a savage. I love Apollo. And basically what Apollo does when he goes, confronts Python, he says, you're the one who beat the living shit out of my brother's men. Isn't that right? To live up to my brother's expectations, a mighty person such as myself will deal with you. Python's like, what are you talking about? But whatever, I don't really care. To have one of the 12 Olympian gods come all the way down here to fight me, it's like an honor. This is perfect. I'll tear you apart. And then right away on cue, Apollo just punches the fuck out of Python, slams him in his face and knocked him down with a single punch. And Apollo says, better give up. I'm the winner. And Python says, this shitty god, I'll kill you. I'm not done yet. Just because I took one hit, I, I'm not. And then he thinks to himself, what is this strength? He's too strong, but then he's like, nah, I'm not going to let a guy like you beat me. Let's continue. And Apollo just looks at him like, kind of confused. Python screams out, I'll not be defeated yet. Apollo just stops him. He's like, oh, I see. Okay, let's leave the rest for tomorrow. I'm going to crash right here on this bed. You go sleep elsewhere and we'll wrap it up tomorrow. And Python's like, what the fuck? Who is this guy? But he did it. He went away. He came back the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. And every single day, Apollo would whoop his ass, but he would never kill him. On the final day, Python started, he was crawling on the ground, just battered, beaten down. He's like, shit, I cannot lose. I cannot lose yet. Not to a guy like you. And Apollo says, why are you willing to go so far? Python explains, I was hated for no reason, persecuted in the heavens and on earth. It's the same everywhere I go. Just because I was born a monster, because I look like this, that's why. You're being admired for being beautiful and reliable. Unlike me, I don't care about all powerful gods who are born with everything from the start. And he gets mad again. He's crying. I'm not going to lose. I can't lose. And he gets ready to try fighting Apollo again. And Apollo says, how beautiful. You're beautiful. That's what I said. Python doesn't believe me. He's like, don't fuck with me. I'm no idiot. Apollo says, I'm not messing around and you're not an idiot. Python says, this form of mine, where's the beauty in such a monster? Apollo says, form, I don't care how you look. The beauty is in who you are right now. The you who is fighting with your very soul. That is beautiful. I understand you. Python says, yeah, wh wh what do you know about me? And Apollo says, it was the same for me as well. We get some narration that says, was well, Apollo a shining all powerful God since the beginning? 
No, he was seen as a mediocre god. We get to this panel of Zeus, Poseidon, Hades, the preeminent gods. Adamus is also there because obviously he's going to be pushed in this story as being important. Then there's another god that seems like it's Hercules, but it is halfway cut off. So maybe that leads to it being somebody else. It's always possible. It kind of does look like Hercules though, but I'll leave that up to you guys. In the world of the Greek gods, Apollo was recognized by anyone as a mediocre god. And I actually love this because... Thinking back to how we all viewed the tournament, when we saw Apollo on the roster, all of us collectively thought, oh, Apollo's gonna be a mid-tier god. Like, he's not gonna be one of the strongest, like, he's not as strong as the big three from the Greeks. He's gonna be somewhere in the middle, and he'll probably fight somebody like Sima, because we thought Sima wasn't gonna be all that strong. Maybe he will be. We thought he wasn't gonna be all that strong. We thought it was gonna be a sniper battle. But instead, the guy that we thought was gonna be fighting Odin, the guy that we thought was gonna be fighting last, and even who Hilda hyped up, and even Leonidas himself said, I should be fighting last, is fighting Apollo. It's because Apollo is much stronger than we all thought and he has earned the right of being a high tier god in this verse i love that and i think that this was a great callback because i think the author knew what he was doing making it like this god of philosophy god of poetry god of medicine god of archery the same things i talked about earlier apollo's peculiar talents were not inborn talents he acquired them all through bloody hard work and we see this training montage of him doing all the things that he's the god of and earning the titles of the god of said thing and the mediocre god who had nothing earned everything. He was included in the 12 Olympians and eventually became Helios, the god of the sun, Phobos, Apollo, and he was praised. When Python hears this, he falls to his knees. He says, you and I were the same. Apollo says, the unbeautiful are those who are satisfied with the present and stop moving forward. Those who rest on their laurels of happiness and good fortune, those who know themselves know that they are not enough. Those who know themselves know that they are weak. Those who know themselves are not afraid to change. Those who know themselves must speak. And this all hits home with Python. He's, he breaks down in tears. He says, but I've hurt people. I can't take that back. And Apollo looks at him, cold ass shots of Apollo, by the way. He starts walking away from me. He says, a snake whose tail is stepped on can bite a person. You would probably use violence to protect your own life, right? I guess it's also the God's job to stop it before it becomes a war. I've had enough of this vacation. I'm going home. He leaves Python speechless. Python still crying, says, I will not be defeated. I'm not going to lose anymore. And Apollo looks back with the knucks out, getting ready to fist bump him like an air fist bump. He says, all right, that's beauty. I'm counting on you. Python went for the fist bump. And from that day forward, he stopped raiding the villages and actually stayed in the land of Delphi, built the temple that honors Apollo. And he was the one that inscribed the words, know thyself on the stone. And from that day, he just protected it. Now, I think that this is all very beautiful. And it just reinforces what I've told you guys about how Apollo is not the status quo. He's not what we thought. He's not going to be like Poseidon. He is just true confidence. He is not arrogance. He is the man that knows how strong he is. He knows what he's capable of. And he's going to let you know. He's not trying to disparage you. He's not trying to bring you down to raise himself up. He just is that guy. And I love this. Apollo is solidifying himself. I think at this point, it is done. He is my favorite character in the series at this point. We got to see how this all wraps up. I, if they stick the landing on this fight, this is shaping up to be one of the best. We continue on by seeing Zeus saying, by knowing yourself, you can surpass yourself. He is the one who keeps improving himself. So while everybody else has been content with their levels of strength, somebody like Poseidon, content, like he believes he's above everybody else, wasn't training. Apollo kept training himself to get stronger and stronger and stronger. He never stopped, never satisfied. Love this guy. For that reason, Apollo was so strong. And I'm starting to buy into what Zeus said last chapter where it's like, is this man really one of the strongest for real? You know what I'm saying? He said he was unbeatable. And Apollo says to become more beautiful than yesterday and even more beautiful than this very moment, I'll burn my very soul. Never satisfied. I'm always looking to improve. And he's actually like grateful to Leonidas for this. Leonidas is so stunned by all this information but i like the fact that even though he was completely wrong he's like fuck it i don't give a shit we're fighting now so i'm taking your ass down he's like still trying to act cool in that state shitty god however doesn't matter to me i fucking love this he's got his cigar in his hand which they're putting emphasis on again amazing shot at leonidas by the way he fucking rips through the cigar he looks crazy like a straight demon he's like i'm the one filled with a big ass amount of killing intent. I'll murder you with all my strength. And Apollo makes kind of a regal hand motion. He's like, King Leonidas of Sparta, I don't like your foul language, but that previous attack of yours was beautiful. You also seem to be someone who knows thyself and burns your soul. In that case, there's only one thing left to do. Together, 
let's scorch our souls to our heart's content. Basically, he finally is acknowledging Leonidas as a worthy opponent, which makes him even more dangerous in my opinion. He views Leonidas as a legitimate threat, a worthy adversary, and he is not in any way diminished by the damage he took. Apollo is fucking awesome, love him, and the final shot of Leonidas is one of just absolute shock. So he kind of tried to reaffirm himself, but now he's like shocked. I think he's going to get more mad next chapter. I'm rooting for Apollo at this point, bro. I cannot lie. I am rooting for Apollo. I know about my theories thinking that the Greeks are going to lose and maybe he will lose, but I kind of want to see Apollo win, especially because his ideology is the one that has not faltered. Leonidas' ideology is the one that's crumbled. He was completely wrong. He had the complete wrong interpretation of Apollo, and I feel like that should have consequences in the battle. To completely misjudge your opponent should spell the end. I guess we'll see how he adapts. We'll see what the cigar ends up being. If it is revealed to end up being his true valent or is revealed to be his innate ability. We'll see. But man, Apollo is fucking earned all the respect that I thought he was going to earn. He just keeps getting better each and every chapter. And I love this fight and I love everything about it. Of course, this was a backstory centric chapter. Not a lot of fighting, just a lot of dialogue, which is consistent with Record of Ragnarok. I will say I'm a little bit disappointed we did not get to see Artemis because she is like a major force for Apollo. She's his twin. His divine weapon is called the Threads of Artemis. I thought she was going to definitely have a big role in that. But for some reason, whatever reason, the author is not showing a lot of female characters. Aphrodite's there and we got to see Shiva's wives, but they've held back Hera, Zeus's wife. They've held back a lot of female characters to where it's like, I don't know what the reason is, but I think that there is a reason for that. I want to see Artemis for sure. And I kind of wish we got to see more of what made Apollo like this. We kind of got to see like how he acted. Um, but it was for a reason. It was to prove the point that like Leonidas was completely wrong. I don't know if we'll ever get it. I hope we do one day. I like the chapter. Cannot wait for next chapter, which will be all battle heavy, more than likely. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Drop a like as always. Subscribe for more. I cover it every month and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.